Hi, my name is Henry Egloff and I'm going to show you how to create mirror kaleidoscopic like effects and animations using Blender 2.8. So just quickly, a while ago I had a bit of fun and I created some animations like this and I thought I would basically show you how I set up Blender to create this effect. So I'm just going to switch to Blender and here is an example I created and you can see that I've got some objects here and they're all mirrored and if I apply effects to them um, like shifting their rotation and location and things like that all those things will animate. So of course you can always just animate out a quarter of your animation and then use a video editing program to sort of flip it on the horizontal axis and then flip those two uh, quarters on the vertical axis. But this technique that I've worked out in Blender is really good because like I've just shown I can work with my objects straight in this kind of mirroring space and this helps me kind of visualize what I'm doing with the animation. So I'm going to start with a new Blender document and before I forget I'm going to include a step-by-step -step tutorial for how to do this on my website with all the steps if you prefer to follow along with a step-by-step -step written guide. So getting back to Blender, what I'm going to do is first I'm just going to set up an object that I want to be mirrored. So I'm just going to press X on the keyboard and delete that default cube and I'm going to add the mesh monkey. And what I want to do is I want to view this object uh, straight along the Y axis, axis. So I'm going to adjust the camera. So I'm going to select the camera and in the viewport I'm going to press N on the keyboard and I'm going to set the location of the camera to zero on the x-axis and zero on the z-axis. And the y-axis I'm going to set to minus 10. And the rotation on the x-axis will be 90, y will be zero, and z will be zero. So you can see my camera is lining up to look at my monkey. And I'm just going to view through the camera now. So this is kind of optional, but what I'm going to do is just select the monkey object, go to object, shade smooth to smooth it a bit. And I'm also going to go into the modifiers and add a subdivision surface modifier just to smooth it even more. And I guess while I'm here, I can add a basic material to it by clicking on the material tab and select new and I'm just going to leave it on the principled and I'm going to turn up the metallic a little bit to maybe something like 0.2 and I mean I can't really see that until I, I, I view it through the viewport shading but I'll, I'll get into this in more detail later. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an object that's it's kind of going to be like a masking object it's going to be an object that is going to control um, where this object is shown. And so I'm going to go and add the cube object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it up. So I'm going to create quite a big area here. You may need to adjust this to make it even bigger uh, depending on what you're doing. And I'm going to set, set the position to minus 5 and the Z to 5. So it's kind of like what I'm doing is I'm kind of just blocking out a quarter of my movie area here. And so now what I'm going to do is select my, and actually if I move my camera you can kind of see what I've got there, something like that. So now I'm going to select my Susan object and I'm going to um, apply a modifier to it. So I'm going to click on the tab for modifiers and I'm going to add the modifier for um, Boolean. 
So this is going to add the Boolean modifier on top of my subdivision surface, which I might just collapse so that's out of the way. So what I want to do is for the operation, I'm going to set it to intersect and for the object, I'm going to select the cube object. And something that kind of can help here is to rename this object. So I'm just going to rename it to cube mask. And I'll just go back to here. So, yep. And so now my monkey object is actually only showing where it is, in, is inside this object. But I can't really see that until I, I adjust what's happening up here in the outliner. So I'm going to click on this little drop down here under filter and I'm going to select the uh, disabling viewports one and um, the disabling renders one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disable my cube mask in the viewport and in the render. And well, that's actually my Suzanne object, uh, which appears a little bit strangely at first. But if I just click on the object and just move it a little bit, it sort of appears in there how it should. So again, you can see that I've sort of managed to chop that into a quarter. I'm just going to view through the camera again. And so now what I can do is I can apply another modifier to it. And I'll just collapse that up and go to Add Modifier Mirror. And I'm going to mirror it on the X and Z axis. And that's sort of working okay. But there's one more thing that I want to do here, which is I want to add a, an empty object, which I'm going to align to the very um, center axis. And I'll just set it on the plane axis one. You can pick the arrows one, but I prefer this one. And so that's aligned in the center. And now getting back to my Susan object, where it says mirror object, I'm just going to select that empty. And so that just means that it will mirror from that point and I can sort of move my object around, something like that. So what I'll do to just kind of do this very quickly, is I'm just gonna come down here and move my timeline up a little bit. And so this is all sort of set up to go. Um, there is actually one more thing that I should do, and that is point my light directly at the um, objects following sort of the line of the camera. Um, so what I'm going to do is click on my light, and I'm going to kind of use the same formula that I used for the camera, which was 0, minus 10, 0, and then... Um, you know, because this is a point light, this doesn't really matter. But if I decide to change it to one of the other lights, it might help. So I'm just going to change the X to 90 and 0 and 0. Kind of the same as my um, camera. So I think uh, I'm tempted to not kind of fuss around with this too much in this demonstration. But some things that you can do, which are good, is you go into your world settings and you can set the background color if you like. I think in my demonstration, um, I, I, I bring that up a little bit. Um, and I can also now, I can sort of work with my, my Susan material a bit. So I can go into the properties and I can set the base color to be darker. And um, I think another thing that I do is go into the light settings and <clears throat> turn this up a little bit. I think I've set it to 4,000, something like that. Um, so I might just make that a bit darker so you know you you can adjust those sort of light lighting and material settings how you like it but the main thing that I'm showing here is how to kind of create this sort of effect and you know the next part is really about creating an animation and the way that I do that is, I mean, firstly, I, I usually decide how long I want the animation to be, but I'll just leave it on that, that default setting. This is important. You want to hit the little record button. And then when you've got your cursor over the viewport, press I to insert a keyframe. And this one here is good location, rotation, scale, because it gives you a lot of options. So one little trick that I do is I move this to the end of a timeline and I insert the same kind of keyframe. 
and that just means my start and my end will be the same. And then it's just a matter of moving this kind of slider somewhere in your timeline and applying some changes to your object. You know, it could be anything like rotation, whatever you like. And then those will sort of um, tween together. And that's pretty much it. So I, I won't demonstrate how to actually export the rendered movie in this um, demonstration. I think that that's something covered by plenty of other tutorials on YouTube. But that's the main gist of what I wanted to show you. And I thought it would be really cool if you do do uh, an animation using this technique, you might want to post a link in the comments uh, so we can build up like a little kind of collection of, of people using this technique. And yeah, that's all. Um, of course, feel free to subscribe or leave any comments. That's all. Bye.